Hi, everybody. So I'm the entertainment. And uh, like we did a couple of years ago in Berkeley, we ended the show kind of with a song. So uh, we all saw the video and how important singing and music and all that sort of stuff is to keep the movement together. So um, we're going to sing Climb Every Mountain from the uh, musical and film Sound of Music. So how many people know that song? And if you know it, you want to sing it really loud in case the person next to you doesn't. And on the last part, uh, which goes climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow till you find your dream. I want you to reach all the way down to the, the soles of your shoes and pull it right up and have it come out your mouth. So don't be shy. Stand up if you feel like it. So there's no music, no uh, instrumentals going along with this. We're just going to start off with um, actually climb every mountain, ford every stream. I'm sorry, climb every mountain, search high and low, follow every byway, every path you know. And then we'll go into a dream that will need all the love you can give every day of your life for as long as you live. And then climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow until you find your dream. Okay? <coughs> Wish me luck. Crank this up a little bit here. Yeah, this is a sing-along, please. No, I don't want to do any solo in here. Okay, so uh, it goes. Climb every mountain, search high and low, follow every byway, every path you know. A dream that will need all the love you can give. Every day of your life, for as long as you live. Sing it out now. Climb every mountain, <laughs> ford every stream, follow every rainbow. Till you find your dream. Thank you very much. Keep singing. So we're going to just do quick report backs from each of the four breakouts. So uh, we'll have some a representative from each talk for two minutes. Um, we have a few backstage. If your breakout is not backstage yet, then please come around. Uh, so yeah, let's go for it. Um, starting with B Bill for the uh, Central Valley panel. So this was the... Uh, uh Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse panel, uh, Earth, Fire, Air, Water, and it was on the Central Valley and Climate Change. The first speaker was Jeannie Merrill with the California Climate and Agriculture Network, and she basically emphasized that um, mm -hmm. uh, farms are an important carbon sequestration source, so it's important to keep farms from uh, turning into development. Uh, she uh, mentioned many new initiatives, like the New Soils Initiative that they support, um, and other uh, what new ways of handling manure, and she got into some details on that, and also showed some interesting slides about um, about the Central Valley and uh, and uh, and and uh, farming and inequality, and ways to message around climate change. Uh, you don't you can go lead with the data. You don't have to mention. There's all kinds of ways that you can speak to farmers around climate change issues without mentioning climate change. The next speaker was Genevieve Gale with the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition. Uh, she emphasized the number one pollutant in terms of harming our lungs and hearts is a 2.5 micron um, uh, air pollution particles. And so uh, what's necessary there is uh, one of the things she emphasized is going to the state level when your local, your local boards like the San Joaquin Air District if they're very um, resistant to climate change or air pollution efforts, go to the state level. She also emphasizes doing power analyses to understand your local agencies when they're uh, 
and, and, and using that to pick the right time to lobby. Um, the, um, also working with farmers in terms of wood chipping, instead of burning wood chips, maybe uh, carbon sequestration of wood chips. <coughs> uh, the third speaker was Russ Henley, with the, uh, formerly with the California Natural Resources Agency, and he talked about, he emphasized, uh, apart from the obvious uh, fires and what's going on, forest policy synchrony in the state of California. He mentioned five reports, a lot of great stuff is happening. Uh, he even talked about biomass plants as maybe one example of how to deal with uh, 100 million dead trees. Um, the last speaker, John Andrews, with the Department of Water Resources, um, he mentioned, he emphasized at the beginning of his talk that it's folklore that California is going to run out of water. We're not going to run out of water. The issue is maybe water management. Um, his favorite graph he mentioned was uh, the issue is not water, but temperature increases. Again, with messaging on climate change, he said in the Central Valley, he mentioned, you know, focus on data, not computer models. The data is very powerful on its own. Uh, talk about the number of wells that are dropping, uh, ground wells, not computer models. One third of vulnerable communities in California are in the Central Valley. Uh, a couple speakers, including John, mentioned working with environmental justice movements. And when you talk about climate change in Central Valley, be careful. Folks are just struggling to get by. Um, and reach out to churches. Uh, he mentioned liquor stores and churches in the Central Valley, and he focused, you know, focus more on churches, and don't do the doom and gloom stuff, which I tend to do, uh, so it was very helpful for me from Modesto to hear him talk. Thank you, Bill. Great. Next we have Lisa from the Diversity Workshop. Hi, so uh, Valerie Bain was our wonderful presenter, and she's also a member of our board, so shout out to her. That was fantastic. Thank you. And um, <laughs> to quickly summarize, so we started off with a very challenging activity where we had a list of 12 people of which we had to select eight to go on a spaceship that would leave Earth while the rest of Earth was destroyed. So we had to pick which four people to leave behind. and. Um, the, I'm, I'm still processing the exercise, but I think part of the point was to just get us thinking about the fact that everybody has problems because everybody on this list had some com complication in their life. And um, then that sort of segued into a conversation about we're all just people, we all have problems, and we all need to approach each other as people. And sort of starting there when we talk about how to approach people from different backgrounds from our own. And so then she gave a wonderful presentation that, um, among other things, made the case that people of all cultures vote. That was repeated multiple times. And um, so the idea there was sort of a motivation of why we want to be doing this work of broadening our base and expanding CCL's demographics. And um, so then toward, so we got a lot of sort of motivation and suggestions about, among other things, meeting people where they are and um, making sure that people feel comfortable because we're not just going to them and asking for things, but we're getting to know them as people and really emphasizing the idea that everybody you interact with is a human being and you need to approach them that way. Um, and which falls right into the CCL core values of building relationships. And then we, we, fa we finished off with brainstorming about local organizations that we could work with, because we're talking about both uh, making organizational connections with local organizations as well as building connections with individuals to bring in as volunteers. And so we started brainstorming as a group about, you know, who locally could we bring in, um, which groups are working locally, who, um, you know, would, would broaden the diversity of CCL if we worked with their people and if we formed partnerships with them. And so I invite all of you to do that activity in your head right now of thinking about um, which local groups you want to form connections with. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Um, one quick reminder, uh, uh, please, before you leave today, drop off your name tag badge sleeve at, at any of the boxes in the front. Great, okay, uh, next we have Dan with Living Room Conversations. Well, almost half the people in this room were at the Living Room Conversations group. Uh, 
which to me was probably the most important thing uh, because it's, it indicates that people want to be able to communicate and hear and uh, break through the, the barriers. And uh, some of the things that happened, um, Steve Riesling, Riesling, who was leading the group, he did a great job of kind of giving an overview and then we all practiced. Uh, and there were the, the normal things of active listening, 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 empathy, listening, listening. <laughs> one of my favorite parts was one gentleman, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, uh, said the phrase, find a door instead of trying to chip through the walls. Thank you. Great, thank you, Dan. Um, did we have anyone from living room conversations that wanted to come up? Yeah. Oh, sorry, um, I mean on the road. Uh, okay, maybe they were, oh yeah. Great, thank you, we're, we'll give her a moment to come down. Um, in the me while she's coming, um, I wanna invite Heath and Jennifer to come over. And um, we need to give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> They, they made this possible. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> okay, they're just going to say a quick word each. Um, so here, here goes. Well, I, I just want to thank the wonderful team on the program planning committee. It's just such a pleasure to work with all of you, um, Carl, <laughs> through the you know, you know, whole uh, back and forth with Anna Eshu and Lisa and Tim, putting together the panel, and Bill and Ellie, who was just always raising his hand for the next thing he could do, Jutton, who kept jumping in at the last minute to save us on all kinds of technical things. And I'm not forgetting, so uh, could everybody who is on that planning committee please stand up so we can uh, thank you for, <laughs> Connie, yeah, please. People have left, but what a fabulous team. Thanks again. Yes, thank you very much to the, pla the planning team for an amazing program. And I would like to thank the food team um, we especially, Joan Donovan, who did all the Costco shopping, and Mallory, who did all the shopping for the evening. And thank you to Tasha for her recommendation for the Asian box. Everybody seemed to like that. And you were guys were a great team to uh, plan with, and, and, and we did it started a couple months ago. And the leader of the food team is, uh, position is now open. So um, I've had a maybe, and um, maybe there'll be some yeses. I've, it will all be perfectly organized and ready to hand off. So, but please, the um, food team, please stand up, the folks that are still here. <laughs> the comment I got is that um, everybody felt um, well-fed and energized with lots of yummy food. So thank you. And also, let's thank um, Tasha again, um, or in the first place. I don't know if we've thanked Tasha yet for... <laughs> Aw, for really um, just um, constant, constant um, organization for us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay, we have one more report back. Um, <laughs> here we go. What was it for Canada? Candace is going to talk about the on the road breakout. Hi, um, I attended uh, the last breakout, number four, on the road for climate action, and Dr. Um, Shahir Mazri and his um, fiance, Athena Similaris, and uh, Dr. Shahir Mazri talked about his time, or both of their time, spent on the road uh, advocating for political action and talking about his research in uh, the connection between um, the climate patterns and they also emphasized 
um, what they learned from the communities that were they were presenting to and um, meeting with around the country, and especially listening to all of these different communities and hearing about what the regional specific issues are around climate change. So it was really interesting to hear his experience. Um, and another shout out to Tim, and I'm sorry I forget your last name, who will be? We. Oui who will be doing a bike ride, a ni um, 90 presentations in 90 days, beginning in February. So um, shout out to you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thanks. OK, we have one last little thing. Um, we thought in honor of uh, Martin Luther King Day that we would uh, each read a quote. So I'll st start out with one of my favorites. Let us realize the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And finally, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. Thank you, everyone. See you next year, but hopefully sooner. Don't forget to return your sleeves. <laughs>